everybody, Music Man 82 here. I'm back with another hiking video. This one is a trip that I did in 2014 with my friend Chris up Fortress Mountain, which comes in at 12,085 feet. It's in the uh, southwest portion of the Absorca Range, and it was a spectacular hike. Difficult, we did it in early season, but oh man, it's absolutely beautiful up there. So stick around, I'll have some pictures coming up here in just a sec. So this video, I'm uh, starting with a shout out to the Absorca Outdoor Fellowship, which is a Facebook group run by my friend Jaron, and I uh, just wanted to say thank you for posting the videos on that page, uh, and to the members of that group who are watching them, uh, this uh, area of the state is amazing, so uh, get out there, keep hiking. Uh, this trip was a really fun one. Fortress Mountain is a mountain that not many people have heard of, it's one that uh, even if you have heard of it, you've probably never even dreamed of standing on the summit. Uh, it's way out there, and uh, Tom Turiano in his book, Select Peaks of the Greater Yellowstone, describes standing on the summit as being on the uh, prow of a big ship sailing through a sea of Absorca peaks, and it really does feel like that, the way the summit is configured. It's just amazing, the mountains that you see out there. So this is in the southwestern portion of the range, uh, the northern portion of the Absorcas is north of the North Fork Highway between Cody and Yellowstone, and then the southwestern portion is between the south and the North Forks, and then the southeast portion is south of the South Fork Highway, if that makes any sense. Um, this mountain is, one of, the, is, is uh, one of the few in the immediate vicinity that are over 12,000 feet. I think it's the only one until you get quite a bit farther south. And to get to it, you start at the Blackwater uh, Trailhead on the North Fork Highway. So I'll go over um, details of the hike in and the, the climb as the pictures go by. But uh, this is beautiful country, definitely wild out there. There's tons and tons of uh, grizzlies. We were lucky enough not to see one. It seems like I say that a lot, but uh, I've had a lot of fortunate experiences out there. Uh, I know people that see bears every time they go out. So. Um, hopefully you enjoy this video and uh, we'll see you in a bit. So a climb of Fortress Mountain begins at the Blackwater Fire Memorial, which is up at the upper right of the picture there on the North Fork Highway. And the memorial is there for um, to remember a bunch of firefighters um, from the civilian corps that died in a fire on Clayton Mountain, which is the far edge of the far right edge of the map there. Uh, this took place back in the 1930s, and there's uh, the Fire Memorial Trail actually ascends most of the way up Clayton Mountain uh, with a bunch of other memorial plaques and places where you can read about what happened. So the trip that we took actually extends uh, at a uh, junction and it goes up kind of the middle. So if you look at Sheep Mesa, which is the lower edge of the map, looks like a giant hand with a bunch of fingers extending northward. Fortress Mountain is at the very bottom of the picture. And so to a, a climb it, you have to get up on Sheep Mesa. So um, the junction is here on the map, and then you turn right at a sign, which goes up the Natural Bridge Trail, and it was um, really rough going. Um, and then <clears throat> eventually it got to here about 8,900 feet. We started encountering snow, which you'll see in the pictures here in a second. And then we made our camp just close to tree line right here. Um, early the next morning, we ascended up to Sheep Mesa um, by this route and got up here. And this is where you can look over due east and see Blackwater Natural Bridge. I'll talk about that more uh, when you see the pictures. Then you climb up to the summit. It's class two, not that difficult of climbing, just a really long trek altogether. On the way down, we headed down this way and did a really fun slide down the snow for about 600 feet and then retraced our steps. Round trip is around 20 miles with about 6,000 vertical feet. So uh, we were in June, so the wildflowers were out and absolutely beautiful. Here's Chris going up the trail. And then this is the trail fork. You wanna take the natural bridge trail to get to Sheep Mountain, or to Sheep Mesa. And then um, this is looking, you can see the natural arch there 
kind of on the far right of that ridge. It, it's, it looks really teeny, but the thing is huge. Um, and there in the middle of, of this picture is Double Mountain, uh, which as far as I can tell is unclimbed. I, it's got really, really steep uh, breaches, uh cliffs all the way around it. I've never found any record of anyone having climbed it. Most of the trail is not maintained once you turn right at the fork. We were over and under logs all day long. It was really exhausting. And um, there are a couple of fun stream crossings. And then you get up above the um, around 8,900 feet and you start to see, at least we did a lot of snow. This is on north, north facing slopes. So um, did a lot of this just trying to keep heading upwards. There's a small arch up there that we found near camp and then we kind of headed up the stream uh, bed on the snow. We could hear the running water underneath and uh, luckily didn't break through. Our camp was this beautiful spot right below tree line. Uh, we were able to find uh, an open patch of, above the stream to get water and it was just a gorgeous night. Early the next morning, uh, we started heading up on the snow, and then we could start to see the Alpen Glow there on Sheep Mesa above us, and our route kind of headed up to the left of this picture on the, on the open ground without any snow. Uh, looking back uh, behind us to the, one of the, the, kind of the middle finger of Sheep Mesa, and this is a view looking north to the northern Mazorcas. And then here is once we get up on Sheep Mesa, the sun was in a really bad spot for this picture, but uh, you can see the natural arch there, and it is huge. Uh, it, most people believe it's the highest and largest arch in the world, um, and possibly one of the five largest arches in the world. No one knows exactly how big it is. Um, there's uh, several uh, people that have gone in to explore it, um, and. It's, you can't climb up to it because the rock is really rotten, and I'm guessing expert climbers with the right gear could probably get to it. Um, Coxcomb Mountain is the mountain in the middle of the picture, and it's, as far as I can tell, unclimbed as well. Very rugged, steep, rotten rock. Uh, so the, the arch itself, you know, estimates range anywhere from 150 feet to 250 feet high, and uh, we just, no one knows exactly <laughs> how big it is. There was an expedition in 2017 to try and fly a uh, drone up to it to get footage and take measurements, uh, but they ran into a lot of troubles and weren't able to get everything that they wanted. Uh, there's supposed to be <clears throat> some sort of a documentary at some point about what they found, but I haven't found, seen it yet. So it's a beautiful sight. Not a lot of people get to see that arch, but it is just, it is a massive massive thing. So this is our first look at Fortress Mountain. The route uh, goes kind of on that connecting ridge over a little bit to the right and then just ascends up. Beautiful peak. As you can see, um, the the route is not difficult. There's just that one little snow section there we had to, to climb up. Um, nothing too dangerous. There's looking back down on the, the valley we had just come up. And the snow up there in late June was just beautiful. Uh, really easy walking, nothing nothing that you need crampons or micro spikes for. Uh, right about this spot, this was uh, really cool because you can see all the cornices up top and I'm guessing a month or two earlier they were massive, but there was a ton of rock slides and uh, ice fall, snow fall activity going on. You couldn't really probably call them avalanches, but there was a lot of noise coming from this east facing slope here. Uh, it was pretty spectacular to watch some of the debris just come falling down. Um, here's Chris getting close to the summit and then this is the video of uh, the summit panorama. Summit view directly off to the south is super spectacular. Uh, the 
the peaks out here are huge approaches, you know, neighborhood of 15 miles or more to get to. And as you can see, there's a few peaks that I was able to label on this. You can see all the way over to the Tetons there in the far right of the picture. There are a couple other peaks on here that I'm not sure what they are. Uh, just haven't done enough exploring out here. But like I said, this is rugged country. Very few people go out here. Um, another great view from the summit. We headed down, it wasn't too, I think it was still late morning, maybe 10, 30 or 11 when we started heading down. And then we headed a little bit to the left as I showed on the map and we were kind of hoping to find a way where we could just take our axes and glissade down to the valley. Uh, we were a little worried about the cornices, uh, but um, I was like, well, let's see what happens. And I kind of jumped off and and ended up being able to drop 600 vertical feet at just one slide. Uh, it was super fun. Uh, this is a great look at the northern Azorcas here. Just a few of the peaks that you'll see on the skyline. One last look over to the arch there. And then I jumped off and went sliding. Here you can see our, our butt print down in the snow all the way down. And there were a few other places on the way down that we could slide a bit. Um, I did, this was a great trip because I ended up on one of the slides hitting my tailbone on some ice. And I remember getting out of the car at home. I was in a lot of pain and I could barely sit straight for like two weeks after this trip. Uh, just a fantastic, beautiful, um, beautiful trip. And this is looking back up the road that you're hiking on. This road is open. Some of the year when we were there, it was not open yet. So we had to add a few miles to the trip. Um, but that's kind of a summation of it. Uh, great place to go if you're comfortable in grizzly bear country and just want to see a, a mountain that is rarely, rarely climbed. Thanks so much for watching the video of my 2014 climb of Fortress Mountain with my friend Chris. It was a great trip and uh, really fun to take. It's a place I'll probably never visit again uh, unless I'm out there to climb another a different mountain. It's just such a such a rugged place it's hard to get out there. So uh, if you liked the video um, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for some more hikes coming up here in the next few weeks and months. Cheers!